The control panel has been around all the way since 1985 and has been a crucial part of Windows ever since. But with the latest releases of Windows, Microsoft has been slowly migrating more and more components from the control panel to the new settings app. Now you may think that the control panel is starting to become a lost cause, but what if I told you that the control panel has been almost fully restored? Well in today's video, I've done just that, and I'll be showing you the control panel back in action like it used to. Now before we start, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and like my videos as it helps out the channel a ton. Now let's begin. For reference, here's what the control panel currently looks like without any changes made. Now let's show you what the control panel looks like with almost everything restored. And there we go, this is what the control panel looks like with almost everything restored. Now you can already tell that there's some differences. For example, under appearance and personalization, you can see there's some additional task links, as well as in user accounts and clock and region. Now before we go any further, I'd like to mention that some applets in the control panel that couldn't be restored I've made them redirect to either the new settings app or UWP apps in some cases. To start, let's show you what the system security category looks like. So far, it may not look like anything's changed, but as we scroll down, you'll notice that there's a bunch of new control panel applets, starting with Windows Update, Family Safety, Device Manager, Performance Information and Tools, Indexing Options, Internet Options, Microsoft Defender Antivirus, and Problem Reports and Solutions. So first, Let's show you what security and maintenance looks like. To start, it may not look like anything's changed, but if you pay close attention, you'll notice that troubleshooting has been added here, and it actually works. So I'll show that real quick, and just like that, it opens troubleshooting. Windows Defender Firewall is stayed the same, and unfortunately, the System Control Panel applet will redirect you to settings. Power Options has stayed the same, same with File History, Backup and Restore, BitLocker Drive Encryption, Storage Spaces, Work Folders, and Windows Tools. When as we scroll down, we can see all the new control panel applets have been added. Let's start with problem reports and solutions. Now this applet hasn't actually been restored, but it does take you to pages within the control panel that act the same way that problem reports and solutions did. So if we click on the applet, it opens troubleshooting. That's what problem reports and solutions was. It was a way of troubleshooting your computer. The task links, which are these blue links here, will also take us to troubleshooting. If we open this, it takes us to troubleshooting, but now if we click view problem history, it takes us to this page, which is problem reports, which is in security and maintenance. And you can see that it's pretty similar to the way that problem reports and solutions worked. So the next applet that we can show, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's Microsoft Defender Antivirus. But by clicking on it, it'll open Microsoft Defender in settings, as the original app, of course, has been removed from Windows. The next applet that hasn't been removed for the control panel, but was removed from the system and security category was Internet Options. And if you pay close attention, you'll notice that the task links have been slightly changed. But if we click on Internet Options, it'll just open Internet Options like it normally would. So the next applet we have is Indexing Options. And this again exists within the control panel, but was removed from the system and security, um, but was removed from the system and security category. And you can see that it works just fine, and its task link works as well. Now we have an interesting control panel applet, which is Performance Information and Tools. And this applet is also known as the Windows Experience Index page. So if we open it, and you can see that the page loads just like it used to. You can see our Windows Index score, you can see all the components and what was rated, you have your sidebar here, everything works just like it used to. And the same thing with the task links. If you click on Check Your Computer's Windows Experience Index Base Score, it opens Performance Information and Tools. If we also click Use Tools to Improve Performance, it opens the same page. Next, we have Device Manager, which will just open Device Manager, and same with its task links. Now we can get to Family Safety. Now, unfortunately, this applet wasn't able to be restored, but a compromise is that it will redirect to Settings. Same with its task link. And the same thing applies to Windows Update. Next, we can get to Network and Internet. Network and Sharing Center works just like it did normally, same with Internet Options and Windows Defender Firewall. And now we have the People Near Me applet. Now by clicking on this, it'll take us to the new version of the People app. Now we have Sync Center. Now this applet exists within the control panel, but was removed from the Network and Internet category. We can click on this, and it'll open the Sync Center. And you can see that the page opens just like it used to. By clicking on the task links, it opens the page. We can click View Sync Results, and as you can see, it opens Sync Results. We can click on Resolve Sync Conflicts, and you can see that it opens the Conflicts page. And lastly, we have Offline Files. By clicking on this, it opens the original page, and if you pay close attention, you'll notice that it says Enable Offline Files and Enable Offline Files here. And if we enable Offline Files, it'll give us an additional task link, 
but they'll both be different of course. It won't say enable offline files because we would have already enabled offline files. Next, we can get to hardware and sound. And now this is a very big category. This was shrunk a lot in Windows 10 and 11, but with everything restored that's been inside of this category, there's a lot to explore. We can scroll down and you'll see that there's so many applets here. To start, we have devices and printers, which has stayed the same. Same with autoplay, sound, and power options. And now we have one of the biggest applets that's been restored in the control panel. And now you may think that this will redirect you to settings, but actually, it doesn't. The display control panel applet has been restored inside of the control panel and everything works. To show you that everything works, let's change the size of the title bars. We can click apply here and you can see that it's been increased. You can see that it's now been changed. Let's put it back to the way it was before and you can see it worked. Now unfortunately by clicking on adjust resolution it'll take us to settings. But don't worry, there's still a way to access it. By clicking on the task link, adjust screen resolution, you can see that it takes us to the original page and it works too. So let's change our screen resolution, click apply and click keep changes and you can see that it's changed the screen resolution. If we want to change it back, we just put the slider back to the way it was before, click keep changes and there we go. And there we go. The display control panel applet successfully works. By clicking on this task link here, you can see that it opens the display page just like it used to. And this task link would normally open the Windows help app but since Microsoft has removed that, it just takes us to the web. And next we have pen and touch. Now since this isn't a tablet, if we open this, it'll just give us an error. But if you were on a device where you had pen and touch, this would open like normal. Next we have tablet PC settings. The page works just like it used to, and so does its task link. And next we have location settings, which again, the page has been removed, so it redirects us to settings. Next we have game controllers, and this page opens just like it used to. And same with its task link. Next we have color management, which you can see works, as well as its task link. Next we have device manager, and its task links also work. Then we have keyboard, we have mouse, we have phone and modem, and now we have Bluetooth devices. And now this page opens the legacy version of Bluetooth and devices. So if we click on it, you can see that it takes us to the older version of Bluetooth and devices. Next we have printers, and you can see that it opens the original printers page. And now this is from Windows Vista and was removed in Windows 7 because Microsoft introduced the devices and printers applet. Lastly, we have the scanners and cameras applet, and you can see that it works. Next, let's open the programs category. You can see that there's two new applets, which are Get Programs and Microsoft Defender Antivirus. Programs and features and default programs have stayed the same, except you'll notice that there's three new task links, which are Stop a Program from Running at Startup, Make a File Type Always Open in a Specific Program, and Set Your Default Programs. And then we have Get Programs. And now this was introduced in Windows Vista, but of course this takes us to the web because we would get new programs from the Windows Marketplace, and unfortunately that no longer exists. But it still does take us to the link that it normally would have. Next, we have Microsoft Defender Antivirus, and of course it has its task links, but this will take us to the new version of Microsoft Defender Antivirus. Next, let's open User Accounts. And now the User Accounts applet has stayed the same, same with Credential Manager, and Family Safety will take us to Settings. And now we get to Appearance and Personalization. Now this category has some good applets. It may not have a lot, but it still has some good ones. For example, we have the Personalization Control Panel applet. And you can see that it works. By clicking on desktop background, you can see that it opens, and same with the color and appearance page. Its task links also work, and you've probably noticed that lots of these don't redirect you to settings. Because normally they would redirect you to settings the way that they were, but with a little tweak, they don't redirect you to settings. They take you to the proper pages that they normally would have. And you can see that everything works. Now let's open clock and region, which is the last category that has any changes made to it. You'll notice that there's the language control panel applet, and this applet will take us to settings because a lot of components for the language applet to work have been removed. And now we can open ease of access, which has stayed the same. And now this is not the end yet. If we set the view by to large icons, you'll notice that there's some new applets here. To start, we have add hardware. And if we open this, you'll see that it takes us to the original page. Next we have the Getting Started applet, and this will take us to the new Tips app. We also have the iSCSI Initiator, and this will just open up a prompt for us. And you can see that it works. Next we have Network Connections, and you can see that it takes us to the original page. And everything works here too. Next we have Notification Area Icons, you can see that it opens, as well as the System Icons page. 
And here's what the page looks like with small icons. So there we go. That's the control panel almost fully restored in Windows 11. So to conclude, here's a list of all the control panel applets that have been restored and are working, and all the applets that redirect to settings. So, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like my videos, share them with your friends, and let me know in the comment section down below what you thought on this video. So thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.